Uh, hello, so today we are doing this problem called kth largest element in an array and so the problem says we want to find the kth largest element in an unsorted array. Um, so the kth largest element in the sorted order, not the kth distinct element. Um, so you could have duplicates and then at that point we should count through them until we get to k. And so for example with this array if k is equal to 2 the kth largest element, the second largest element is 5 because the first largest element is 6, the second largest element is 5, and then we get the result 5. For, uh, for this one, um, the fourth largest element is, so the first largest element is 6, the second one is 5, and since we duplicate element count, then the third largest element is 5, the fourth largest element is 4. And so this is the problem, how can we solve it? So the first simple thing is um, let's just sort it and then get the kth largest sort it and then get the uh, the kth largest element in so in reverse order. So in Python, if we do let's use Python here and let's do um, so so with something like this. Um, Let's say if we sort, let's take the array that we have here. So this is our array. Let's call it names. Right? So in Python, if we do minus two, we get the we get the la the the element, the second element from the right. Um, so we kind of get um, so if we sort this array like this then to get the kth largest it's just the second element from the to get the second largest it's just the second element from the right right which is 5 so we just to get the second largest element we can just do this and so for our problem if we have k equal to 2 we can just do minus k like this to get the second largest it's, um, it's the element with index k when counting from the right and so that's what we can do here very easy solution um, Uh, and minus k, right? But of course, this is um, not the, probably not what uh, what the interviewer wants. But let's just try this and see. So that works. Um, the other way to do this is just to use Python again and sort it in the reverse. Which um, what it does is So reverse flag can be said to request the result to be in descending order, right? So if we do that, we get the result in descending order, and at that point, we don't need to do minus k, we can just get k, right? Like this. And so, let's do that one. Should work also. Um, yeah, so basically k is second largest, so I need to use k minus 1 to get the, because the index started from 0. With this one, the index starts from 1, but with this one, it starts from 0, so we need k minus 1. Okay, let's get that. And that passes too. Um, the other way to solve this problem is to use a heap, right? And so we can just use a heap. Um, a min heap to be specific. Um, so let's take this array here. So we can just use a min heap and basically just put elements. As, as before reaching three, we just keep put, putting elements. So we will put put three. So we'll go through this array like this. We will put three, and then we'll put two. And now when we get to 1, we have k elements in the min heap, and so we need to put 1, but after that, because we have more than 2 elements, we just need the k largest, and so we need to pop the smallest element, because that one is for sure not the second largest, because there are already 2 larger than it. So we pop the smallest one, and then we go, we add 5, we are still bigger than 2, now we are bigger than 2, and so we pop the smallest again because it can be the uh, the largest element it can be the kth largest and so we pop this one out um, and um, 
and since it's a min heap when we do just pop it will pop the smallest element by, by default and then now we have six again bigger than two um, so we remove three and then we go again four um, we are more we have more than two and so we pop again the smallest which is four and now we just pop with the min heap and the element that we popped would be five which is the second largest so you can see why this works is because we always maintain that our min heap contains two elements and so two largest element up until that index the index where we are traversing and at the end it will contain this two largest element in the array and we can just take the smaller of the two and that's the k the second largest and this applies for k equal to whatever value right and so let's implement that then so we need a heap um, so we need a heap like this, let's say this, and then we need to go through the array, and we need to, um, so we need to use heap queue, which is what helps us use a priority queue in Python, and we need to do heap push, and we need to push the value in him. and now we need to check if the length of our heap became bigger than k, like we did here, if it is, then we pop the smallest element by just saying heap q dot heap pop and popping the smallest this way. And now, once we are done, we can just return the smallest of the ones left in the heap, which would be just doing this, which is what we did here for five, right? And that's pretty much it. So let's run this. Okay, so that seems to pass the submit. Okay, so that passes. Now another way to do this is to use Python has this handy um, feature where that will make this code a lot shorter, which is you could just do, we could just use heap q. It has a function called, um, it has a function called enlargest. So let's first import it. Um, So import heap q, and now if we do heap q dot enlargest, you can see it finds the n largest elements in a data set, the n largest ones, and so if we want to find the k largest so that we can take the last one, right? And so we do that for names, and once we get that, we get the two largest elements, and so we, can, we need just the last one, right? So we do minus one to get the last one, right? So that's pretty much it. And let's return this. So if you submit this, it should work. Okay, so that passes. Um, and so we saw how to solve it with sorting. We saw how to solve it with a min heap, which in two methods, this one and the previous one. Now let's see how we can solve it using quick select, um, which kind of similar to quick sort and helps find anything that is like return the case um, with some criteria um, and so here the criteria we are using is the case largest um, and um, these basically are called all the statistics, all the statistics um, operations and yeah that's um, useful to know and now let's just um, do our quick select and see how it would work so Quick select usually what it does is just um, uses the same um, method that quick sort does um, for partition um, using partition. Uh, I actually I have a video for both quick select explaining both quick select and uh, quick sort. Um, if you are not familiar with quick select, you can watch that first and then uh, watch this after after it. So quick select uses this partition to just have all the elements smaller to the left. Have the pivot and have all the elements bigger um, to the to the right um, so that's essentially what it does and so what we are interested in is continuously doing that until we know that we have k element to the left of a pivot and then we know that our element is definitely if we have less or if we have more than k elements in the left then we know that our element is definitely on the left right um, so you can actually change this for example when we are looking for the largest we can do something different um, 
to uh, to uh, we can do different comparison basically but the main idea is if we are looking for the smallest then we just need to um, when we have less on the left more than k then we just need to discard the right and just look at the left and keep doing this until we are either down to one element that we are sure is the case um, is the case one we are looking for and so um, Okay, um, so let me solve this. So the first thing we need to do, we, we know we are looking for the kth largest, but quick select usually is easier um, and and people are used to it more looking for the kth smallest. So I'm just going to convert our problem to finding the kth smallest and then after that we can solve it in a in a way that is um, that is more direct, like with kth largest directly. And so how can we do that? So if we let's just define a helper function here that takes names and takes left and takes right and k so this helper or let's call it finds this helper finds smallest um kth kth smallest element right and so to use that to find the kth largest we just so we start from the first element and we end with the last element as the right pointer but to find the case smallest that's just finding the length of nims minus one uh, sorry nims minus um, k right finding the kth smallest is just finding the um, finding the kth largest is just finding the kth um, so this is equivalent to finding uh, the length of nims minus k smallest element right that's the same thing and so we can do that this way and now let's do our quick select to find the kth smallest so we need definitely a partition function right so let's define our partition here function that's just partitions nims so that smaller on the left and bigger on the right and so for that we will need a left point in the right and then our um, our partition function just checks the base case that if we have only one element left then that's certainly the answer um, otherwise we check we take the partition and we partition the array and so nims left is whatever left we have right and we wanna once we get that we check if where we partitioned is like the k value itself so this is this gives us an index and so we check if it's the index of the kth element at that point we can just return it right so otherwise we check if um k is less than p right which means our element is on the left side so we recurse on the left side um so we recurse on the left side which means we keep l but the left but right side becomes p minus one right because we know it's less so it's certainly on this side without the p and we are looking for still k right um otherwise we return we recurse on the right which means we need to do limit this at p plus one because if it was p it w we would have just entered this case and returned nims k but otherwise it's the entire is all the values to the right and so let's look at those so we keep right and then we keep k um pretty much um, so here you can notice i didn't do k minus p because um, I'm keeping the array as it is. I'm not reducing the array. And so the partition here still We still look at the entire array. Just we are using these boundaries to help us um, Find where we are and so that's kind of why we are well, I'm not doing the minus p here If I was like passing the array reduce it like this Then at that point I need to say k minus p because the array changed it, right? Um, and now I need to write my partition function and so um, the partition function that we have pseudocode for it but um, um, uh, okay so wh what do we need to do for the partition we just need to check the we need to pick a pivot 
So I'm just going to pick a pivot to be my pivot to be the right element. And so pivot right element. You can pick it as the left element, you can pick it as the middle, you can pick a random value, it doesn't matter. But if I pick it at this, then I need to also keep track of where my index, um, where the index that I will put it is. And so the index of it needs to be after all the left elements. And so I'm using this value to, to know what that index is. And now I'm just going to go through the entire uh, array from left to right. And I'll check if the value at names i is um, less or equal to um, to the pivot, right? So my pivot is the right element. So I'll just say my pivot is the right element. Then I need to say pivot. If it's less than pivot, then we need to swap so that it becomes to the left. Right, so we need to swap them with uh, uh, sorry, store. Store is on the left, remember it's keeping track of all those left to the pivot. And so we need to swap it so that it becomes at the left side. And then increase the index of store so that the next element we are adding to the left comes after what we added so far, right? And then at the end we need to swap whatever, let's say, store was at this position. Let's say store was at this position, right? And our P was, remember our P is on the right side, right? So our P was here. And so we need to swap it to make it here so that it's between the left, the smaller values and the bigger values. And so that's what we are doing here. So we, we put we put uh, p at the store position, right? And so that would mean here to do that, we will swap store with the right value, which is exactly what we where we chose as the pivot, right? Uh, store and is right. And that, at that point, we can return store as the index of the pivot because we swap it and put it there, right? Um, and pretty much that should be it. So we've done the partition step and we've done the recursion to do the selection. Um, and you can notice here we are not, we are doing only one side each time. So the complexity um, could be in the average case just O of n because we are dividing almost by two every time. Um, okay, so I need this. So yeah, let's just write this time complexity of this is the normal um, uh, quick select, which is O of n, and space complexity here we are using just extra pointers, so it's uh, O, but we are using this recursion, right? So it's almost O of n also, um, and the that that's of course the best case or in the average case, but in qu quick select um, the worst case is of n squared, where if the array is nearly sorted and we choose as the pivot to the smallest element, in that case we can get the worst case. Um, again, I have a video called Quick Select that explains this in detail, um, but uh, yeah, this is the general complexity of Quick Select. Um, so let's run this. Um, okay, so it's error uh, actually. Okay, we are we have enough by one error here. So this is correct. We are going to the right side. Left side is correct. Okay, smaller. Um, this is the same as this. We are partitioning to get and get the pivot index. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually um, I'm not actually swapping this way. I just to swap you need to do this. Ok, 
Така, но си бъд. Okay, so that passes. Um, so you can see here we used quick select. Um, another way to to change this a little bit is choose the um, choose the pivot randomly. And so if we choose the pivot randomly, that means let's just do pivot index. This will usually improve performance because in the case where um, the array is nearly sorted, we don't always pick the biggest element and end up with O of n squared. If we pick randomly. We make it random and prob with probability analysis it will um, end up being open. And so to do that, let's just use Python random function that um, if I do something like import rand and uh, what is it called? Uh, I think uh, I forgot what the function is. So Python Rand int. Yep, it's import random actually. So we need to import random, and then do we can do rand int, random rand int between whatever values. So and it will give us a random element. So you can see it will keep give us giving us a random element. So let's use that. Um, so we need from random import uh, rand end, and we can just use that. We have the pivot index. So now, um, when we are choosing a pivot index that is not the right, we need to swap the pivot index with the right, so that we can keep it at the right position and handle the the all the values. And then at the end, take the right and put it in between the smaller and the bigger portion, right? And so that's what we do here with pivot index. Just it helps us with the implementation, basically. It's not necessary, but it helps us reason about this. Um, and now um, we can just instead check against this, and pretty much that should do it. Um, we have a small issue with that. So, yeah, I swapped pivot index with random, right, with right position, so I should use right, because now the pivot is at the right position, right? So... Okay, let's submit. Okay, so that, that passes. Um, okay, so another way to solve this problem is instead of changing here to get the length minus k and get the k the smallest, let's just change the implementation of our quick select so that instead we are looking for the k largest and the helper here will look for the k largest element. And to change that, we need to put the bigger elements on the right instead, right? And put the smaller ones on the left instead. So that would mean we'll look for this, and and then in our check here, instead of checking k less than p, since we put the bigger elements on the right, then if k is bigger than p, then we go going to look to the left because that's where the larger elements are, and if it's less, we look to the right. That's where the small elements are. Um, and so this would be um, so this is if so if p is bigger than k right that means that we need to look at the left section because that's where the k largest would be and the larger elements would be on the left right um, and the other thing is, since k here starts counting from 1, um, just as we did with the sorted version earlier, we need to do k minus 1 to get the really um, k minus 1. So if we are looking for the second largest k equal to 2, 
Then in the array, because we are counting from zero, we need to look at one, the one at the first position, right? And that's pretty much it. So let's run this. Okay, so that passes. So you can see this is a good insight into quick select because this here can be anything you want to compare these two indices against, right? It can be like comparing with some epsilon value, it can be whatever. Um, so this can be changed um, to, to fit what, we, what the problem is asking. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this problem. We solved it with different um, types of implementation. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.